Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. It depends when you are watching us and when you're tuning in. I hope you're tuning from a nice and comfortable spot. This is Anna Maria Hartley coming to you from Oakville, Ontario. And today we are going to cover a little chunk, little chunk about toxicity and what toxins we are kind of floating it out. Um, so let's just kind of talk about how many toxins we are surrounded by. And joining me is Isa. So Isa, if you would like to introduce yourself. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. My name is Isabella Klikowski. I'm a mom of three. And now I teach parents uh, how to create a career online around their family, starting with health. My journey started with my son and his eczema. And we'll go into that maybe further along how all of that went, went about. But today we're going to be talking about something so important, so extravagant, something that will surely blow your mind. So let's just get <laughs> right into it. All right. So I have absolutely an amazing amount of notes, to be honest. <laughs> but let's start with that, that my journey uh, on this healthy path started with my mom who suffered from Crohn's disease and that kind of got me into exploring different areas of our body exploring our gut of course right uh, if you know what the Crohn's disease is uh, you know that it definitely includes the gut <laughs> and um, this is how that whole journey started uh, but um, today exactly we're going to talk about our toxic soup we are basically living in and yes, it sounds gross, <laughs> but that's what it is. So we know that we live in, in a world right now full of toxins because between, let's say, pesticides on our foods, between synthetic products, which we are having in our cleaning products or in our toiletries, which we use on a daily basis, it's a crazy amount of different products which consist of toxins. And toxins are basically something that is um, well, really not good for us, is it, right? It sits in our body and uh, doesn't want to kind of leave. And what we are also saying is one of the doctors actually said it really, really well, because uh, we always think that, okay, we are what we eat. But he also said, yes, we are what we are absorb, And we also are what we don't eliminate. And that goes back to, let's say, the skin, the three, yes. <laughs> um, and well, skin is our biggest organ, right? So whatever we're putting on the skin definitely goes on the inside. Whatever we breathe from the outside uh, or from our home also goes inside. And then whatever we eat goes inside. Well, what happens then? Who takes care of all this and who processes this? Well, it's our liver and our kidneys and our gut. So everything has to be kind of passing through all that and being detoxified. And a lot of people are thinking, well, so I have kidneys and I have liver. So that's supposed to be just, you know, those two organs which are helping me out. So I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm gonna be, you know, okay. In the meantime, what we are not seeing is that yes, it is fine up to a certain point. And then those organs are getting overrun and they are getting overworked. And that's when we're seeing different symptoms. And what symptoms are we talking about? Well, we're talking about rashes on the skin. We're talking about maybe indigestion. So that's just to start with. How about brain fog? How about lack of sleep? How about osteoporosis? How about arthritis? How about all the other diseases which we are not even connecting to it right in the beginning, like depression, anxiety, ADHD, all those are actually connected to our gut and to the toxins which we have within our body. So let's just cover two kind of here because there's so much information that I would like to share with you and hopefully I can share it with, um, in our next episodes. But today I would like to just cover two, which is our food, and maybe touch on some metals which we have in our bodies. 
So let's start with our food. And uh, right now, I think it's that trend of people kind of going into uh, organic foods. And there is a lot of organic foods out there. And we think, uh, again, oh my goodness, it's a healthy stuff. Well, it could be healthier. Let's say this way. I'm not saying that it's not. And there is a lot of experts which are saying, yes, it's it, it, it probably is a better option for you. But how clean are those foods and what are the guiding kind of um, bodies on that? Um, so first of all, let's start. How did we even get to that separation of the regular food and a food which is organic? Didn't we have all organic before? <laughs> well, we did decades ago, <laughs> decades ago, until let's say um, later on, somewhere around 80s, I think it was uh, when we came back with uh, something that, okay, well, our um, food is the source of food is not enough for the consumption which we need like there's so much consumption going on we eat more we actually dump more uh, that we need more how do we going to, how are we going to do that when there are crops which are basically run over by let's say some kind of a bacteria some bugs some other stuff and suddenly we lose crops so we have to find out okay how can we actually save them so we came up with Something that's supposed to be actually um, a compound, which is supposed to be just uh, for those bugs, for that bacteria, which is kind of eating that, right? And what that bacteria, uh, what that compound does and um, is killing bacteria, but it's, the way it's killing the bacteria is actually going into the um, gut of those pests, pests, which we are having in there. And basically, explodes the guts for those bacteria and for all those pests which we had on our crops. So we came up, came up with that. Um, and I'm going to tell you the name because this is probably what you were waiting for. It's uh, glyphosate. So the glyphosate is something which is contained in Roundup. And we sprayed absolutely everything thing with it absolutely everything with it that's also how we came up with the gmo version <laughs> because we were killing exactly everything that was not good for that crop and trying to come up with something else which will be vital of uh, um, good for let's say future crops um and with the roundup it didn't only stay on the crops it went to the soil it went into the water and then going through even filtering in the water still doesn't remove everything. So guess where it ends up at the end of it? It ends up in you. So you are actually filtering this through your liver and through your kidneys. All that stuff is going through you. It could be lesser amount than it is actually on that crop, but it's still there, right? And also what happened with all this is um, in the process of actually developing new GMO um, seeds and everything else, we actually lost something in the process. So there is uh, nine um, amino acids which we cannot produce in our body. We need it from food. And out of those nines, um, some of them, unfortunately, we totally took out of our food because of dealing with the GMO. So we don't have them anymore. Now the reason, um, the, the reason, the repercussions after that is that there are certain things that are happening. When I was going to school, so when I was in, uh, let's say, elementary school, I didn't have kids which had allergies. I maybe like rarely somebody would say that they have a rash for something, right? Uh, once in a while, uh, I didn't have kids which had asthma. Um, I had maybe a uh, one person in the class which was overweight at that age and um, maybe they were suffering a little bit from asthma because yes they didn't exercise they didn't they couldn't do certain things maybe there was our underlying issues right but i did not have people with chronic conditions i i never heard about somebody who's got add or adhd I didn't have many kids, let's say, which would suffer from anxiety or depression. Well, let's ask now. 
that was me. That was many years ago, right? Well, Isa, if we're going to ask Isa, how many kids did you have in your class which were probably suffering from things like that? Well, that's actually, that's a tricky question because I feel like um, I myself suffered from conditions such as eczema, right? So that's already like, I mean, you're not that much older than I am, but it's already, but okay. <laughs> But that's already, you know, already, let's say that many years later, right? So um, I would say, first off, just to disclose, I don't think things like that were as popular to discuss. So I can't say that I heard of that many, right? But it was definitely less alarming, less alarming rates than there are now, right? Every everyone across the street you know one out of two is depressed two out of three have some of the other conditions so i mean what we're putting in and around our body what we're surrounding ourselves with the thoughts we're surrounding ourselves with which that's a different topic <laughs> um it's it's all harming us right so we have to figure out a way to, yes, we're going to take these things in, right? Because there is no other way, but we need to know that whatever comes in, we need to be able to remove, right? We're not telling you don't eat any food. Don't drink any water. Oh, that coffee is horrible <laughs> for you, right? We're human. We're going to consume these things, just breathing. We, when we are born, our liver is already toxic. Okay. So we just need to realize that we have no other option than to consume these toxins and we need a way to remove them to basically feel better to be able to have our bodies function the way they're supposed to so i hope that answers your question <laughs> well, uh, definitely of, but... a lot less than what i hear now right so you have small kids so you are absolutely seeing that let's say in their classrooms when they talk about whoever mm -hmm. is in their classroom you're probably seeing more of uh, chronic diseases exactly asthma um allergies mm -hmm. allergies are very popular they started mm -hmm. popular when my kids went to school um mm -hmm. so it was like kind of growing trend <laughs> But it's not a trend. That's that's what happens with us. And the reason kind of behind it is exactly those um, whatever we put in our food, uh, those amino acids are not being formed. So they are not protecting us anymore and we don't have them in our body. Um, so the chemicals are kind of being passed through. And actually, I learned from one of the webinars that the study shows that kids which are born right now, so we're talking like brand new born kids, they already born with 200 chemicals in their body, which is unheard of. Like, why is this happening? Well, because it is being passed on from mother to the kid. And now we kind of, we feel bad, I know. <laughs> Like, why am I passing this to my kid? You don't even know it. And whatever exactly is in, in, the, in the environment, whatever you're doing, whatever you're putting on um, as exactly chemicals, which you're using on a daily basis and whatever you're eating already has that. And then we are unfortunately passing this along. So we kind of passing the at least 50% of whatever toxins we have, we're passing that to kids. And um, this is why we also seeing exactly little bit more of different things happening. So the allergies, um, because our kidneys and our liver are so overwhelmed with cleaning whatever is in the food, for example, that it, everything else is kind of passing through. It cannot do much for the rest. So this is where our body is showing up with allergies, with different symptoms, with stuff kind of showing up in there. And we go like, well, I wasn't allergic to this for, you know, years. And then suddenly I'm allergic to it because your liver is overwhelmed. It cannot function and it cannot just kind of clean up whatever it's supposed to clean up. Um, liver has 1500 different functions that it needs to do. So now how important is that poor little liver, which we have on the right side in there and what it needs to do 
it's amazing. It's amazing. And that's just the start. That's just the start. Um, we're talking about food, which is exactly um, full of stuff on it. So we got this, those, those pesticides, which we have on it, first of all. And now organic food, we think, okay, well, let's, let's switch to organic. Let's switch to organic because this is way better. It is. Um, but then we also find that there's a lot of stuff in organic foods and a lot of junk food, which is now also labeled organic. Um, so just a couple of tips. Uh, if you see anything that is called an extract or a color, or it has uh, artificial sweeteners, definitely something not to buy. Definitely something to explore and kind of go like, that's not exactly organic because all those compounds have chemicals in it. And what I found actually, which was really, really funny, I was like, wow, I didn't know that. So maybe you don't know that either. Um, there are compounds which are called rosemary extract, celery powder, and citric acids, which we see a lot in our foods. And we think rosemary extract. Wow. Well, that's a good thing. It's from rosemary, right? So it's, it's rosemary, just extract. Well, it turns out that rosemary ex extract is called rosemary extract because it has, let's say, one compound take out, which they take out from rosemary. The rest is chemicals. But they are able to call it rosemary extract. They won't call it chemical of some sort, dioxide, hydroxide, whatever it is. But they will call it rosemary extract. For us, looking at it, it's like, that's healthy. Celery powder, same thing. They take out one thing out of celery and then they call it a celery powder. So my information comes from um, naturopath doctors. Okay, so I listened to the seminar, which is actually proven uh, facts from doctors, from um, naturopaths, from people who are integrated medicine doctors, and they they know what they're talking about. They did the studies. They are absolutely into those subjects. So the next one around is something that we um, we think that you know. Okay, so we know about heavy metals. We know about heavy metals in our body. We know that if we ingest them, um, it has been something that we've been let's say doing decades ago, again, our parents, like my parents, let's say, uh, when they were painting the house, um, well, <laughs> paint contained lead. We were playing with different toys which were painted with paint which had lead, for example. Lead is one of those heavy metals. Uh, we have mercury. Well, we had thermometers with, <laughs> with mercury in it and, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of other stuff which actually contained that. Um, so things like that, fish, unfortunately, um, cadmium and arsenic, those are the number ones. We have aluminum in a lot of things, including aluminum foil, which we are using <laughs> on an almost daily basis for cooking. Yes, but we use batteries, right? Nobody thinks about that, but we handle batteries. I've yep. almost been saying, I never use aluminum foil in my life, but I'm sure you use batteries. Exactly. Um, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of metals which we are ingesting, which we put on our body, same like with everything else. Now, the very, very curious fact, which I just learned was that lead can be passed up to four generations. Think about wow. that. Wow. In your genes? In your genes. Basically, through the mother's womb, it passes through as a toxin with the newborn. And it can pass up to four generations that way. That's how heavy it latches on um, to basically to fat, to, to different um, cells, and it passes through. Four generations. Now, this sounds very scary, right? But our intention isn't to scare you. It's to be well, aware, be aware that. Exactly, it's not to scare you because it's out there, right? We already know it's out there. It's just mm -hmm. to be aware of the fact that that's what, what happens. And now what heavy metals are causing for us, it's uh, so you, you will think, okay, well, so I have heavy metals and what? Can't I just like 
let them out <laughs> like easily? Well, not exactly easy. There are ways and there are ways definitely to detoxify your body, to help the body. Um, but you have to be just aware that this is not, not something that's going to happen overnight. It's a process. Uh, so it could be that you need to kind of be aware of it for a longer period of time and do specific things for a longer period of time or change your diets or your what you are doing, what you're putting on your body with time. I'm not saying right now go to your bathroom and just dump everything that you have in there because it has compounds of some sort <laughs> in there that you don't need. Um, if you're suffering really suffering and there is a lot of symptoms that are showing up well like trembling like um exactly depression anxiety you can't really grab uh the content of it like you have no idea definitely go to the doctor and start with the process there uh because um i would suggest maybe doing exactly testing for all the heavy metals you would be surprised yeah, you can do a panel a blood panel exactly you would be so surprised how much you actually have in your body really it's a surprising thing um if any of you are like me uh and you had those gray fillings like the the nice silvery gray fillings in your them, body, yeah right um you know that um those are actually toxic because yes, they contain heavy metal in there. Um, so, and fish, yes. Now there are areas which let's say wild fish is definitely better for you. Um, there are like Arctic sea would be definitely a place to kind of maybe look for uh, fish from there. Uh, why? Because definitely there is less pollution in there. There's less toxins in around that. Um, so, it all depends, like you have to do your research. That's basically what it comes down to. You need to do your research to find out where am I getting my stuff from? What's on it? Should I be ingesting that? Or maybe should I, I shouldn't, right? Um, and detoxing is very important because exactly sleeping problems, fatigue, joint pain, brain fog, anxiety, uh, infertility, those are all things that are connected to the heavy metals, to our gut, to a microbiome not being where it's supposed to be in your body. Um, and why the heavy metals are so hard kind of to get rid of, because a lot of times we think, okay, we can do a lot of, um, let's say, minerals, and maybe those minerals will actually push them out. No, that's why it's called heavy metal. And minerals are way lighter, so they cannot push the heavy metals out it's actually the opposite so for example if you have the heavy metals in um it's linked right now to osteoporosis and i know there is a lot of people who are suffering from osteoporosis my mom included for example i had it um i don't have it anymore but i had it and um what happens with that is that we take calcium supplement and we think okay well i'm taking enough calcium i should be repairing my bones calcium is a mineral so if you have a lot of heavy metals, they are pushing that calcium out. That's where your osteoporosis is happening because they also flushing everything out of your bones, including that calcium, and you get holes basically in your bones, right? So this is the osteoporosis in it. Mm -hmm. But and the heavy metals are leach into your tissues. They it's not just like that they sit around and float around. No, they attach to good yeah. to good good things and basically they stop working the way they should because the heavy metal is more dominant than the good exactly you know, and, genes um, and what, um, yeah and what the doctors are saying also that toxins they attach to fat so now when we think about that like the toxins attaching to fat well yes so here we go when we are overweight we have more area for the toxins to attach to well, here's the problem, right? If we're not going to lose the fat, those those toxins are still floating in there. So yes, kind of keeping up with your weight is, is quite, quite a good thing, right? Um, but you also have fat in your brain. That's a fat tissue in there too. So that, those heavy metals, those toxins, overall, not only heavy metals, but also generally speaking, toxins are attaching it themselves to your brain. 
this is when we are looking at exactly all those beautiful mental health problems which we are um, you know which we mentioned ADHD depression anxieties this is all a cause of that so is your gut healthy do you maybe need a detox maybe you need to start on that journey because doing let's say detox for nine days is just the beginning this is when you kind of starting your journey and this is where you actually getting into the habit of eating better foods and we kind of give you actually the the, <laughs> the whole list of different foods and there's a lot of greens a lot of greens but again be aware of kind of where you're getting your greens from so maybe maybe kind of uh, go into the farmer's market maybe go into places where you can get a little bit cleaner but i'm sure even buying from the regular store and getting into the habit of eating more greens will be better for you than eating all that stuff which has colors, artificial flavors, and everything else in there. So it's just a question of doing a change in your life slowly, day by day, so you can feel better. And I promise you, if you change, you are going to feel better. Your fogginess is going to go away. Your pains, maybe your rashes, they will definitely subside, but it's a process. You have to believe in the process too. It's not gonna happen from day one to day two. Never happens like that. It took generations for us to get to the point where we are right now. It's gonna take some time to kind of work on our bodies. But as not I said- generation, don't worry, not generation. Not generation, you can help yourself and there is definitely help to, to do that. Um, but you have to be aware of it. Just, you know, this is why we're doing this because we would like to raise the awareness of what's happening in our body and how we can help ourselves, how we can do, um, how we can have healthier life, how we can actually be those mothers and grandmothers which are running after the soccer uh, with our kids. We are playing on the ground with our kids. We are not in distress. We are not uh, suffering from arthritis and osteoporosis and we are tired, fatigued all the time. No, we, we want to be involved with our kids, with our grandkids. We want to have our life very much you know, out there and be able to, let's say, explore different areas, travel and, and do all those things, right? So that's why it's important to know what you're putting in your body, what you are putting on your skin, as well as what you are trying to get out of your body. And now I'm gonna leave up to Isa to tell you that there is actually a really cool a way of maybe getting rid of some of those heavy metals. <laughs> yes, yes. So, I mean, I'm very, I love talking about heavy metals because I feel like we don't realize the effect, right? So let me just start by saying your coffee has heavy metals. And now imagine drinking one, two, five cups a day, right? Because that used to be myself. I now drink chaga coffee because for the, for the fall and for the winter, I switched to chaga, which is a mushroom, much healthier, way more benefits. But coffee in itself has toxins. And what happens is it's tested for toxins. And the toxic level is actually a little bit below the heavy metal, um, you know, red factor flag. So it's okay and considered safe to drink, right? But now add three cups of coffee a day plus all the other food that you're eating, which is also safe when just taken into effect, plus the body wash you just used, plus the water you just drank and the, and the air that you had to breathe, right? That in itself on a daily basis, we just overload our bodies. So I actually, um, in, in itself, um, you can go ahead and start with several ways of starting to remove you know, remove um, toxins and heavy metals. Changing your diet, as Anna Maria said, is a great way to start, right? But you have to be aware that you're still, you may not be putting as much heavy metals in, 
but the ones that are inside are still inside. You have to get them out, right? So a great way to do that is to follow, of course, um, our aloe detox, which is a nine day detox. You can do the aloe, um, you know, good quality. You need to make sure it's good quality. You need to make sure it's certified. So you're not putting more toxins in trying to remove toxins out, right? You don't want the juice because you don't, you're not looking to add sugar. You're not looking to add water. You're looking to add the aloe vera gel, which also helps to flush out whatever toxins you may, you know, be having in your intestines. And it doesn't do it overnight, right? Because it, it took so long for you to get here. It needs to take, you know, a few months to clean things out. But one thing that I also have done for my kids in addition to the aloe, which has, you know, proved to be super effective, is to do a heavy metal smoothie, right? Detox smoothie. So the heavy metal detox smoothie that I found, I've tried a few. The most effective one that I have is from actually Anthony Williams. I'm sure, you, you know, some of you may have known him as medical medium, right? And whether you believe him or you don't believe him, I have had results done before and after, doing those two things, right, which was the aloe and the heavy metal detox. And I want to give you some pointers because all of these things could be purchased, right? You can purchase them and have them on hand and just do it. The tip is to do it effectively because if you do, whether you take the aloe or you take any other heavy metal detox, if you do it one day or two day or three day, that's definitely better than not doing it at all, but you probably won't see much results, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just give you a timeline that it takes about 45 days, effectively either doing the detox, doing the aloe, whatever other form of detoxing to remove heavy metals you're doing to start seeing a difference in the levels, right? Because you have to remember, not only are you removing it, you're still constantly every day adding to it, right? So it takes time. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you these ingredients. This is for one smoothie. It may seem like it's a lot, but my one tip is to do it and use it for breakfast, right? It's gonna keep you full until lunch and you're gonna have it out of the way. You're gonna know that you did something good for yourself. That's automatically gonna improve your mood. So the ingredients are two bananas, two cups of wild blueberries. And I'm gonna tell you why that's super important. One cup of cilantro. It needs to be cilantro because um, cilantro is one of the necessary ingredients to help remove the heavy metals. You know how sometimes you taste the cilantro and you have like that soapy taste? I know some people have that. That actually means you need the cilantro because your saliva, you have so much heavy metals that your saliva is extruding it, okay? So I'm going to repeat that. Two bananas, two cups of wild blueberries, one cup of cilantro, one cup of fresh squeezed or no additive orange juice, one teaspoon of barley grass juice powder. Um, you can switch online. And if you don't have the juice powder, if you want to use fresh barley grass, just see how much that equates to. Use Google. He's good. <laughs> one <laughs> teaspoon spirulina one small handful of dulce and then you can add additional water like one extra cup of water if that doesn't want to blend but here's the thing so some people have a concern regarding the dulce right because it's a seaweed but what you don't know is because it's a seaweed it will not give off the metal right so if it already has mercury in it it's a magnet. Dulce is a magnet for heavy metals. So if you're eating it, anything that has that it has inside, it will not give off because it's a magnet for it, right? So it's only going to find like um, the other heavy metals in your body to to remove. And the best part is, hold on, I'm just looking. Um, it binds to lead, aluminum, copper cadmium and nickel in addition to mercury so if you have any of those it's going to extract them from your body and because dulce is a seaweed it actually sits once you digest it it sits lower to the colon right so it's actually almost like a backup plan if your body didn't do a great enough job getting rid of 
everything that's in your food before it leaves your colon, it's a magnet for those items that make it through your digestive tract and attaches to that before you go to the bathroom. So another tip is the blueberries. Why not cultivated blueberries? You can actually find a lot of wild blueberries already frozen and in supermarkets. It needs to be a frozen sort of um, wild blueberry or a powder if you can't find it. It can't just be regular blueberries because they're not as effective, right? If you don't water a blueberry bush, cultivated blueberry bush, what happens? It dies. Whereas wild blueberries, they're wild. They have learned to adapt and pick up things from the soil, from the ground that keep them alive, right? We don't go out and water water wild blueberries. They have learned to take up all the nutrients that they need and have survived for so many centuries in the wild, in droughts. So that's why we want wild blueberries because they have a lot more benefits. They have a lot more nutrients and they are actually also what binds to, you know, help push out the heavy metals. So I hope that was useful. Oh, absolutely. I actually didn't know that much about blueberries, <laughs> for, example. <See? laughs> for example. And you know what? That shake actually sounds quite tasty, at least to me. I don't know. I don't yeah. have and if anybody has, so <laughs> Yeah, if anybody had, like I was just going to say, if you can't stand cilantro, right? Start off with one or two sprigs. Just every time you make it, add just a little bit more, right? Because the point of doing this is so you can actually drink it, not so you could pour it down the sink because you don't like the taste. And, you know, maybe the first day, try it without it, right? It's definitely most beneficial to include that because, like I mentioned, cilantro is actually a very, very good herb to remove heavy metals. And if you don't like the taste of it, that usually means that you need it. So... Um, just add one more, a little bit more every day. And I mean, if you can't, you can't, right? It's better to do it without the cilantro than not do it at all. But if you want all the benefits, definitely make sure that you can make that cilantro work in there. Mm -hmm. Well, I will have to tell that to my family because it seems like they always go at me. Oh, you added cilantro again. <laughs> yeah, show cilantro. them the video. Show them the video. <laughs> So it's just funny when you mentioned cilantro i'm like oh yeah okay <laughs> well um that was actually very interesting so i hope you can write down uh you know you can rewind that video definitely to have the recipe and all the information so um well let us know let us know if you are on the journey to healthier life and if you are willing kind of to get into that um, maybe detoxing and starting changing your life for better life so you can actually enjoy it and you can live maybe without pain, maybe without um, sleepless nights, maybe without exactly joint pain, uh, which is quite common, I would say. So if you are willing to do that, well, it will take you a little bit of change. But if you would like to talk to us and have some questions about, you know, how can I do this? How can I do this slowly? So do it slowly. It's not, you know, Rome was not built in one day. So definitely this is not something, it's a, it's a journey. It's not a sprint that you need to do it within, let's say, a couple of days mm -hmm. because it's not going to happen. It's your body. You need to take care of it. Um, yeah, but change like one thing a day. One, change yeah, one thing a day and make sure that you're doing it to be effective, right? You want to continue. So it's easier to do one thing at a time than throw all these new things and quit in a week. Exactly. So if you have a full gamma of different products in your cupboard and you go like, well, I'm not dumping all this. We're not asking you to do so. But maybe next time when you're buying your salt, change the salt to a healthier version of, of the salt versus just the one which probably has a lot of stuff in it. Um, maybe instead of buying a pound of sugar, you know, think about it. What can I use as an alternative? Or maybe I can skip it altogether, you know? So there you go. Those are the things that we're going to kind of ask you to do in the long run. But like I said, it's a slow process. It's a journey. So enjoy 
And also join us on that journey because we are doing it with you. It's not like you don't have to do it alone. You don't have to do it alone. And we are, we doing it and we discovering a lot of things along the way. We are learning a lot. And this is where we actually sharing our knowledge, what we learned with you. So we are very much reachable over any social media, or you can contact us uh, by commenting under this video. Whatever you're watching it, you can definitely find us. So there is Isa Kulikowski and Anna Maria Hartley. We will welcome you to our next episode when we are going to continue on that journey of how you can change your life to live healthier life and maybe get rid of some other toxins or maybe pay attention to what you're doing. How about what are you drinking? Maybe we should attack that subject. What are we drinking and what's in our drinks? How about that? So <laughs> let's see you next time for our little chat. <laughs> And have a great day. We'll see you next time. Take care.